It was really great to be asked to speak here today. I work for an organisation called the Children's Food Trust um, and I take every single opportunity I can to come and talk to you about children's food. You've just heard from Tom just how bad things are in this country for food and in particular for our children. There's 3.6 million children in the UK living in poverty at the moment. 200,000 of those don't claim and register for the free school meals they're entitled to. And another 200,000 don't take the meal that they have registered for. So that just gives you an idea of the scale of the problem of hungry children that we are looking at at the moment. There's lots of statistics I could quote to you today and there's lots of talk about evidence and does good nutrition mean good learning, all of those things. But actually I'm here today to just say who can argue that feeding children good food is not just the right thing to do? For those of you who don't know about the Children's Food Trust, we are a national charity and our vision is to protect every child's right to eat better and so do better. We provide lots of training, resources for, for nursery schools, for, for schools and lots of other settings, so restaurants, etc., who offer food to children. And we also run um, a national uh, Let's Get Cooking programme, which provides cookery clubs to 5,000 schools across the country and lots of other community settings as well. We also run the Children's Food Trust Award and we also have recently launched a training hub for schools, for caterers, for local authorities called the Learning Network. We are a research hub and have been for a long time on children's food issues and we hold a, a, a big range of peer-reviewed national research um, and our research and nutrition team are internationally recognised for their work and often go to other countries to advise. We're also members of the School Food Plan Expert Panel, and that's what I'm here to talk to you about today. So I've been asked by, by John Vincent and Henry Dumbleby to do that. For those of you who don't know about the School Food Plan yet, it was originally commissioned in July 2012 um, by the Secretary of State for Education, Michael Gove, and two reviewers, Henry Dimbleby and John Vincent, who are independent restaurateurs, were asked two questions. How do we get our children eating well in school? And what role should cookery play? And more broadly, food education in schools. So they went out to schools, they spoke to lots of different um, organisations involved in children's food and in school food. And what they did was bring together an expert panel of lots of different organisations to help advise them and help draw up the plan. The plan was published in July this year by the Secretary of State for Education. And what it does is set out some clear actions. It's not meant to be a plan that just gets put on a shelf somewhere. It's about having clear actions with clear responsibilities and probably more importantly, a commitment from government about funding and how they're going to actually fund some of this work. What I thought might be useful was to show you the video that, that the School Food Plan team have actually produced because this will give you the best overview really of what the plan is. So, technology permitting... In July 2012, Michael Gove asked us to put together a new school food plan to answer two questions. How can we get 5 million children in around 22,000 schools eating well? And what role should cooking and food play in schools more broadly? The first thing we did was get on a train and visit a school. And over the past year, we've eaten in more than 50 schools. We've spoken to pupils, teachers, parents, cooks, chefs, volunteers, charity workers, industry bodies, caterers, and farmers. And we've analysed in detail the economics of school food. School food in the farming state that we'd expect. Thanks in part to Jamie Oliver alerting the nation to the horrors of the Turkey Twister back in 2005. But also due to many, many people doing amazing things across the country. However, there is still a long way to go. Due to poor diet, a quarter of all children in the UK leave school obese. Whilst in 2012, the NHS spent over £10 billion treating illnesses caused by bad diet. That's the equivalent of 40 new hospitals every year. The first illuminating moment came when we met the Children's Food Trust, who showed us a graph tracing the percentage of children eating school meals in England over the past 40 years. Take-up started at 70% in the late 70s, but then, like a cliff collapsing into the sea, crumbled away, sinking in the mid-80s to below 50%, the point at which school dinners became economically unviable. 
we take up currently around 40 percent of small dinner services like a half empty restaurant it's losing money 140 million pounds per year to be precise and what are children eating instead for the large part unhealthy packed lunches only one percent of packed lunches meet nutritional standards two-thirds contain sweets sugary drinks and snacks like crisps this really matters if children learn to eat well at school, they are more likely to eat well as adults and save the NHS billions of pounds. But it's not just about health. Children who eat better learn better. If parents spent the close to £1 billion a year laying on unhealthy packed lunches on nutritious school meals instead, we can make the whole school food system solvent again. If demand goes up, we can serve better meals at a lower cost. So the plan's number one aim is increasing the number of children eating good school food. It is both the means and the end. The plan's second aim is to support head teachers to help change their school's food. The only common factor we found in every school with great food was the ethos and culture created by the leaders in those schools. Whether they were primaries or secondary or academies or maintained rural or urban, new or old. 95% of head teachers believe eating well improves attainment and behaviour. But 40% want more support to make it happen. And our plan will give them that support. The School Food Plan is not a series of recommendations to be up and denied over. It's a plan with actions agreed by the government and by people working in the sector. The government has already agreed to make cooking compulsory in schools for all children up to the age of 14. They will also be supporting head teachers by setting up a fund for charities to work directly with many schools in the country to increase the take-up of good food. We will also be creating a website where teachers can go to see many examples of what works well in schools across the country and find contacts with people who can help them directly. Public and private caterers are coming together to form an alliance to give the 58,000 school cooks, that's a bigger workforce than the Royal Navy, more training in kitchen skills to improve food quality and build morale. With help from Jamie Oliver and brand guru Wally Owens, we will be spreading the word about the good things happening in school food. The government will be providing seed funding to set up breakfast clubs in a large number of schools across the country, where many of the children are eligible for free school meals. Finally, we are going to create three flagship areas across the country, which will show that with intense improvement in food in a given area, we can have a major impact on the health We have an ambitious vision, a financially sound school food system in which well-trained, fulfilled cooks serve flavourful fresh food to at least 70% of all pupils and will monitor progress annually. We're going to build on the great work that's already been done to create a golden age for school food so that we all live in a country where we're healthier, happier and most importantly, more likely to I think one of the things that the school food plan has managed to do um, is create some positivity and consensus across the school food industry. There's been lots of players for a, a very, very long time all trying to do little bits and pieces around school food. And what this has done is actually bring so many people together to work together and to run common initiatives that are all going to achieve better things. The economics of school food we know needs improving and the one of the ways to do that is to increase the take up of school meals. The more children eating them, the cheaper it becomes to produce them for families. And what's really important is sharing what works well across the plan. There's so many schools out there that are doing such good things and yet lots of schools don't know about it. So one of the things around the school food plan is making sure that all of that information gets shared. There's three main principles that you've probably picked up from that video there. The head teacher is probably the most important person in this because they are the people that lead the change. Everybody else can help support, they can do lots of work, but if the head teacher isn't leading that change, then actually what can be achieved isn't as great. Food needs to be part of a whole school approach. It isn't just something that happens to a school at lunchtime. It needs to be part of everything they do. And more importantly, we need to see lunchtime through the eyes of a child. Just the same as when you go into a restaurant to eat, you expect to be treated in a certain way. Children should also be treated in a, in a good environment, in a good way. The school food plan has lots of actions. Number 17 there was highlighted because at the time this presentation was written, we hadn't had that huge big announcement of free school meals for all um, infant pupils. 
at the time the plan was agreed, that was still under consideration. And as we know, now that, that that's been agreed, and what a fantastic announcement. It's an announcement that really shows the commitment that government are given around school meals and, and the actions. As you can see, the actions for government are there, they're laid out, and then more importantly, they're agreed by government already. So this is not something that we're hoping or waiting for, for the next election to get agreed by either parties. These are agreed by the government at the moment. There's also an all-party parliamentary group where all, all different parties actually attend to discuss this issue. So there is agreement right across the board on the importance of school food. The three key updates that I just wanted to pull out for you is cookery and food education is now going to be compulsory on the curriculum from September next year. We're going to have revised food-based standards in schools. So at the moment, for those of you who don't know, there is actually legislation about what can and can't be served in a school and about the nutritional composition of a school meal. They're going to be revised to hopefully make them slightly easier for, for schools to provide. And obviously we have the universal free school meal announcement. Ofsted have also just included food um, in their guidance, in their inspection guidance. And probably the most important commitment that government have made is that they've now um, committed to putting approximately £14 million pounds in for organisations to actually go out and help schools to do all of this. Like I said, cookery in the curriculum is effective from 2014, from September. And as part of the school food plan, um, the TESS is building a dedicated online support page so that those schools who don't currently have facilities and don't currently have the training can actually get all that help and support that they need. There's also lots of organisations, so ours, for example, also offers lots of help and support in that area. Revised food-based standards are being worked on at the moment. They are going to go out to consultation in early 2014. If you're a nutrition student, I urge you to keep an eye on that and please do respond to the consultation, have a little look at them, see what you're working on, see if you can actually help respond to that. And of course, the universal free school meal announcement. I'm not going to stand here and pretend that this is... Um, going to be an easy announcement to implement, uh, implement. I've worked in schools long enough to actually know just how difficult it is to suddenly start feeding a whole heap of extra children coming through. We know there's going to be capacity issues. We know that there's going to be issues whether you can actually fit all the children in, the capacity of your cooks, all of those things. And what the government are actually doing at the moment is David Laws has brought together a task force to, to look at these issues and see what support the government can help um, and offer to schools in that area. The Ofsted inspection guidance that I remembered, I've just put this on a slide because Ofsted will now be starting to look at, at school food and it's important that everybody knows what they're going to be looking at. So they will consider how your lunchtime and the dining space contribute to the behaviour and the entire culture of the school. And they'll also be asking head teachers and school leaders to comment about how they ensure a healthy lifestyle for the children. Um, there will be training for head teachers as well. So National College... Um, are, all, are busy at the moment writing some guidance to put into to their programme and that's being developed at the moment and there's lots of people advising on that. Um, National College um, are, as you know, one of the people who design a lot of head teacher and a lot of teacher training, so that's why they've been asked to do that. <coughs> And more importantly, was this the website that's sharing what works well. So if you're a school and you've got a case study to offer or you're doing something great at your school, please do get in touch with the school food plan team because they're really, really keen to promote and share everything that you're doing. Any questions, please go straight to the school food plan team. One of the great things about them, there's um, a guy called Miles Bremner who's the director of the school food plan. The school food plan is not an organisation. It is an active plan that lots of organisations are working together to deliver. Miles coordinates all of that and he's really interested to talk to people. So please do go on their website and, and his details are all on there if you want to talk to him. Alternatively, you can come to our organisation. There's lots of other organisations. Food for Life are here today, so they, they are also involved in that and they'd be happy to talk to you as well. But any questions, please do ask. Thank you.